information. Okay, so um, the heart and soul, are you asking for a description of it? Yeah. Okay, so Heart and Soul is um, an organization that works yeah. to innovatively engage the community because you right. know, people hear public meetings. I'm sorry, let me stop you. Oh. So, so I, I understand that part. I was just, so specifically this little piece that you're doing oh, with yeah, yeah. me, what is that all about? Okay. Thank you. So um, we're doing the interviews as you, I think, know about. Um, and what I'm planning to do with this specific interview is put it in the magazine that goes out. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Forgive me. I'm forgetting the name. Okay. Then, uh, um, Community Living Magazine. Mm -hmm. And then okay. I'm also going to have this video for when I um, help other story listeners and gatherers and give them. Oh, the okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. I'll try and look good then. Okay. <laughs> so it's a learning lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, thank you so much for giving me your time today. Um, You're welcome. My pleasure. I'm really excited for it. Um, so I will just start off with the first question, um, which has actually been a burning question of mine for a while. Um, what reason did you run for mayor of the city? So in my, in my previous life, and that's what I call my time in the Franklin School District, my previous life, um, I served as the elementary principal for a number of years and then superintendent for 11 years. And during that 20 plus years, I, I, I learned a lot about our community. I learned that there is no other community like Frankenmood. There is a culture here of passion that doesn't necessarily look the same in any other community. People here are very, um, they're very, they're very passionate about doing things the right way. They're very passionate about working together. They're very passionate um, about high expectations. They, they believe that as a community, we should strive to do our best in whatever we're going to do. Um, they believe that if, if collectively we need to get something done, we are going to be there to support you to get it done. We will help you get it done. Um, and that culture was was very important to me and it was important to me to learn about that culture um and, and also during that time i i just developed all of these relationships with different people of different from different walks of life so of course the the children and their families over 20 plus years you know and those families that might have four or five kids um we were like a family for a whole bunch of years and relationships with all of the many uh, people that um, worked within the Franklin School District, from teachers to custodians to bus drivers, and the, you know, and all of their families. I served on the Franklin Historical Association for 20 years, and so got to know a lot of the um, people who, who were born and raised here, um, and just all these different constituencies. So. So when it was time for me to end that previous um, time in my life, um, I was asked to serve on city council. And so I did so for a couple of years and realized that I have a, I realized probably isn't the right word. I, I recognize that I have a, a skill set um, that I acquired while serving as a superintendent that I think would best serve our city if I were in a leadership role. And, and mayor was that role. Um, I believe a mayor needs to be uh, passionate about their community. I believe that it's important for a mayor to be able to develop uh, relationships with people from all different walks of our community, to have vision, to have purpose, uh, and to, to bring people together. And so um, I decided that knowing that I, I felt my my talents would be better served um, in the role of mayor 
uh, and decided to run for mayor and then I won. So here I am. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't win by much. I don't know if you know that story. I mean, <laughs> um, so, so I only won by 94 votes and, wow. and the previous mayor had served for a, a good long time for 34 years, I, I wow. believe. And, um, I certainly never expected that, that I was going to win and, and I did. And so I, um, I'm thankful and grateful and I've learned a lot and, and I think God, during this whole pandemic time, I, I know there's always a purpose why we get placed where we're placed and mm -hmm. I think that I was in the role that I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So. There's more than you want to know about it. <laughs> no, that, uh, that's what I'm looking for. You know, yeah. anything that you can give me um, yeah. to help me understand this city more and your thoughts of it and all that mm -hmm. sort of good stuff. Um, which brings me right into the second question, which is, what would you like to see be the same here five years from now? I, I love that when we have something that needs to be done, we come together. Um, whether it is the, the JCs who propose a, a splash pad mm -hmm. and collectively they get everybody on board, put together a plan and they get her done, whether the school district expresses that, hey, you know what? We've got some things that need to be done um, that are going to cost a lot of money on our campus community. Will you support that? They come together and they say, yeah, we're going to support that for the good of our children and for the good of our community. Um, when there is, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of something uh, just recently. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the, the COVID, for example. Mm -hmm. When when we look at how um, a collectively a group of people had to come together and figure out how are we going to navigate through these waters during our pandemic time, people come together. And of course there are times when, when people will disagree with decisions that, that are made. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's normal. For the most part, our community recognizes that those disagreements will happen and now we need to move forward in a in a positive way mm -hmm. so uh, that that spirit of mood that um, working together collectively oh wait it uh, of course my computer just went out did it yeah, I, but I got I got um, the spirit of Muth part, and then after that, it cut out. <laughs> um, I think I said uh, <laughs> collective. That's what that's what I would like to see the same in five years. The collectively getting things done. Okay, that mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, someone um, that I once interviewed for this same thing told me that when. You want to do something in Frankenmuth. It's not can we do it. It's how are we going to do it. Right. That's right. Yeah, I think that um, that's a great aspect for a community to have. Thank you. I think the levy is another example. There, there. I can't remember when Sheila first showed up at Rotary to introduce the topic. Well, it had to be after Katrina. So somewhere in between Katrina. Uh, and, and her actually showing up at Rotary and, and sharing with us uh, what was expected, what would have to get done. And, and then to watch the process over time and how it did get done. And not only did it get done, but it got done really well, so much so that it's a thing of beauty rather than just an ugly wall. Mm -hmm. And I like that about uh, Frankenmuth too. <laughs> One of the things that I remember um, as a very young person, I had my first waitress job over here at um, the Franken House Restaurant, which is where the old IGA used to be. Mm -hmm. And I had to work on uh, Parade Sunday. Of course, everybody worked on Parade Sunday for Bavarian Festival. And I remember coming into town early and people were out washing their sidewalks in front of their, their buildings. And I thought, 
Yeah, I really like this. I, I love I love how everybody wants to present us like we're wearing our Sunday best, mm -hmm. you know, for all the guests. And yeah, anyway, just a little side note. <laughs> did you, um, quick question, but did you grow up here? No, I grew up in a, um, a community just north of here, Reese. Okay. Um, small, just a real small community. And I uh, had my first um, job here at 16 and um, knew that someday I'd like to come back here. And then uh, my husband and I, uh, when we had children, we uh, knew that this is where we wanted our kids to go to school. Mm -hmm. And so moved here prior to the opportunity to, to work here. Mm -hmm. um. That's lovely. Um, what would you like to see changed, if anything, within the next five years, or when you think about the city in five years? Um, I, I think that it's difficult for, if I were to go back to what it looked like when I came here, um, it's much tougher for a young family, family with children, Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to pack up and move here. Um, first of all, there are, are very few housing uh, opportunities available, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, and in many cases, the housing market is not, um, not within the reach of many young families who may just be out of school and, and not be able to, to um, handle a, a large mortgage right mm -hmm. now. So um, I would like for there to be more opportunities for young families because I think that a healthy city is one that is multi-generational mm -hmm. and young families and children are a very essential piece of a, of a healthy community. And we need to, we need to continue to explore ways to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's um, one thing that I always learned throughout my planning classes is, is that you, in order to help a place thrive, which of course, Frankenmuth is already thriving so well, um, you need to have the multi-generational aspect and continue to have opportunities for both. Um, right. So I would love to see, you know, how much more the city can even grow from. Right, right. Um, and then last question is, can you tell me about a specific time or story that you felt that the spirit of your town was captured in a single moment, which yeah. I know there's a lot of them, but <laughs> there are. Yeah, I had to really ponder this and, and I decided on this story and you probably were a part of that story and you don't even know you were. So um, in March, when the, the state shut down mm -hmm. um, and, and Bridget suggested that we pull together a task force, um, because that's what we do in Frankenwood, right? We pull people together and we figure out how we're going to get it done. And we're going to include uh, the school district. We're going to include our, our churches and our pastors, the library, the chamber, the law enforcement, emergency people, um, the community foundation. We're going to bring all these people together. We're going to have a meeting and we're going to talk about how are we going to get her done? How, how are we going to help people get through this? And I remember uh, opening my Zoom meeting and there were all these people. And I thought, yep, that's, that's it. That is that's why I'm here, that's why I live here, that's why I'm the mayor, that's why I spent all this time in the school district, because we recognize that there is a problem and we're gonna come together and we're gonna do the best we can to make sure that we navigate ourselves through these troubled waters the best that we can. It was truly a we and it was in that moment when I saw all those little faces on the screen and, and I knew all those people that, oh yeah, they're all on the same page. You're all willing to figure out how to do Zoom because in the beginning, many of <laughs> those people <laughs> didn't necessarily know how to do Zoom, but there they were. Mm -hmm. And we were gonna get it done. And, and I just captured that thought in that moment about mm -hmm. how special that was in a time of crisis, we could come together and, 
and in the spirit of Muth and mm -hmm. get her done. And I think that that task force is uh, just one example of, of how that happens here in our little city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I remember when Bridget first told me about the task force, I thought that, I don't know why every city doesn't do something like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. All the people who are, who have the same goals to the table. And yeah, and it's interesting that you say that too, because as I would share that task force story with um, different people, whether it be out at Saginaw Valley or wherever I am, um, they would say, well, how did you do that? How did you pull people together? How how did you get them to come? Mm -hmm. And and there was no how do you get them to come? They just come because there's that high expectation again, right? It's part of the culture, the thread of the, the fabric of the community. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And and it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that is a great thing to end this interview on. Is that a wrap? Yeah, unless you have anything else that you would like to tell me or no. All right. No, well, I'm I'm so grateful that you asked those questions and that you're you're running with this project and thanks for all you do. Of course. Thank you and have a great okay. rest of your day. Okay. You all too. Right. Yeah. Bye.